Hello my crafty friends, it's Bevla here over at Crafting Chaos and I'm here with a video on how to make the word book, welded word books if you will. So once you've got the basic idea you can use this to create any word. I've just created one for my son called, and I've called it Andy. So let's get started. So first of all we need to create a shape for the end of our book. So I'm going to bring on a rectangle and also this what I think looks a little bit like plaster. So I'm going to bring on those two shapes and then I'm going to send these to the back. And incidentally, I'm working on the canvas downloadable version today. And I do believe that um, the online version is offline at the moment for maintenance. So I'm not sure I haven't been on, but I do believe that to be the case. Now, for this first rectangle, I'm going to make it 4 inches by 4 inches, but I've unticked the maintain aspect ratio because I'm going to want to be able to manipulate size and width independently whilst I'm doing this tutorial. So now I'm going to take the plaster and I'm going to, in this part, so I'm in the second icon here, the edit icon, this, remember, is your properties, this is your layers and this is your artboard. So... We're in the second one, which is edit, and I'm going to rotate the shape by 90 degrees. That will make it the same as this one. Now, I also want it to be the same width and ha of, of the, as the square shape. So I'm just going to make that four and say OK. So now that's the same height as that one. I'm going to take a get a duplicate, so you can right click and hit du duplicate. I've just made a... Um, keyboard shortcut for my Mac because I find it simpler. So I'm just going to, actually I'm going to simplify this by, I'm going to delete those two actually because I'll do it from, I'll make a duplicate of the thinner one. So we're going to duplicate that twice. So either right click and duplicate or if you have a shortcut you could use that. So now I'm going to line it up roughly so that it's in the middle like so and I'm going to centre it. So now that's directly in the centre of that. Then I'm going to shrink this one down a little. So what we're making is like a kind of a fluted edge, which you could see on mine. And then finally, I'm going to do this one in and a little bit down. I'm going to make it smaller. So that way then, it's roughly now about two inches height. So... I'm going to pop that in. I'm actually going to make it slightly less. I'm going to make it about roughly 2.5. And it doesn't have to be exact. So now I've got the three of them lined up on the edge. So what I'm going to do is centre them all to together. And then I'm going to select everything and I'm going to weld. Now that's created the end of the page, if you will, for my word book. So next I'm going to bring on another square. And this time... I'm going to, I'm actually going to just cut this one off because it's a little bit bigger than I wanted for the end. So I'm just going to select it. There, I'm going to select both and I'm going to subtract and then I'm going to end up with the shorter end. Now, you could make different ends using different shapes, but I'm going to work with this one today. So then I'm going to bring on some rectangles. So my first one, I'm just going to bring on squares and just duplicate that and make it the size that I want. So I want, I'm going to make it four by four initially. Let me just think where I'm up to. Four. So that's four by four. And I actually only want this one. I'm going to make a duplicate of that one. And I'm going to make that one two in width and so that one's going to go here and we've got four and then we're going to have another one at six so we're going to duplicate and make that six I didn't quite get that one so duplicate six so I'm just changing the end of the width if you will and if they're looking a little bit big we can always adjust it so I might go with one and a half and then three Oops. and then four 
four and a half and then we want one more that's fat um four and a half six maybe is it let me just check it i think it's six next so i've gone up in um 1.5 so yes it will be six so now we've got an even space between each of those and all I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring this on and I'm going to take three duplicates so I've got them for the ends of each of my shapes okay so that's what I've got so now I'm going to just separate the layers out and I'm going to show you by zooming in how I'm going to line these up on the end of each shape so I'm just going to go more in the middle so but then you'll need to roughly do it that's both sides so it's because this bit in the middle is overlapping like causing the issue. So again, I've all just adjusting where I'm putting in and I'm putting it roughly halfway in between the two. I'll show you again what I mean. Just get, get these welded and I'll show you on one of this one. So I'm bringing in, there's my smallest rectangle, if you will, for the word book. And I'm going to overlap so it's roughly down the middle of this straight section here, like so. Okay, and you can always use your arrow keys to get it. Then select both and line them up in the middle. So that's lined the two shapes up and then you can weld it. So we've just got one more to do. So I just need to drag this rectangle back in. So we'll go through that once more. So again, we're roughly halfway. And like I said, if it's not spot on perfect, it's really not going to matter because it's only going to be out by less than a millimetre. So we're just well lining them up to the middle so we know both of them are directly on top of the other and then we're going to weld. So that's give us a nice fancy edge to our word book. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom out a little so that we can see the mat a little bit clearer. So we've got our top layer, our next layer down, that the next layer and the small the biggest layer. So if I select everything and line it up to the left, that's what, and also to the top, whoops, that's what it's going to look like. And that could just be a word book. So if um, it helps, we can have a look at the layers and we want the longest layer. So we need to click on them. That one needs to be at the bottom. That one is there. That one is there and that one's on top. So now they're okay. So let's put a little bit of colour just so that we can see where we're going with this. So let's just make some nice pinks because we could make this one for a baby, I think. So we'll go with some light, nice pinky colours. So I'm just choosing, obviously, this is dependent on the cardstock that you use. So there's your, your end. So that would be your basic baby um, basic book, if you will. And what you could do if you wanted um, is just bring on a little circle and you can shrink it down. I'm just going to temporarily group those. And we could position the circles. We could just make that one a little bit smaller and then I'm going to duplicate just to make sure we've got not too small so yeah it's at least a quarter of an inch so I'm happy with that I'm going to do duplicate it I'm going to move them apart until I think they're roughly okay and then I'm going to line them up in the middle to so the center here and then I'm just going to put them oops I didn't group them so once you've got them lined up we need to make them a group so we're just going to go on property. Oh. Right click and group them. And then I'm going to move them into position on top of the file. Select everything and again center it in the middle. And if you want it move if you want to move that top one over to the left a little you can. Then you can select both and we're going to now just, I'm not going to move the circles, but I'm just going to now ungroup the file. So we're going to ungroup and we're going to select the circles and that. 
and we're going to subtract. Actually, I needed to make a duplicate before then. So just let me undo that. Edit, undo. So we're going to make three more duplicates. One, two, three. And we're going to align them centrally and in the middle. We've missed one, so if I didn't get quite get them all. So we need to centre and middle. Just need to move that out there. So I'm just going to undo that, just bear with, because I've moved them. So I'm just going to move my pairs out of the way for a second and then I can just get one more. I'll put them back in position in a minute. So I want them centre and top. So now we've got a stack of them and then we're just going to move those into position and we're going to centre them to that one. And we're going to, oops, I don't edit undo, because what I've done is move them again. And I'm going to just move these till it'll be easier to move these than it will to move the circles again. So I'm going to select the top one and that layer, and I'm going to subtract. Then I'm going to select, and then the pink layer underneath, and subtract. And then I'm going to select and then this layer underneath and subtract. And finally, the bottom layer and subtract. So now what we've got is punched holes all the way down the side, if you will. But it's also up, upended my shape. So again, I'm just going to rearrange them. Put in them in the right order. So I want the smallest one on top one here and there we have it so all we've done is just literally put a hole through each of them so that's created your basic book if you will you didn't make that step if you were just going to mount them on a card now remember once you've got them select like this if we group them we can actually make them taller or so that we can fit it onto a six by six card if we make that six maintain the aspect ratio make that six oops hang on i've only got one selected there need to select everything and we're going to group them ungroup and select everything i'm going to nope not center i want the middle so i'm going to select everything middle and left so i know they're all exactly on top of one another now i'm just going to group and then I'm going to resize and make it six. So now that would fit on a six by six card if you want it to make it six by six. You can uncheck the maintain aspect ratio. So all you're doing, and you've still got that nice fancy fluted edge, if you want it to be longer, the width, and make it eight. So it's longer, but that's making it that way. So once you've actually got the file made, you can change it in any way you wish. What I'm going to show you now is how to personalise the file. So I'm just going to go back a little to where we were before and I'm happy with it at that to work on. And I'm going to make this one. I made Andrew before, so this time I'm going to do baby. B-A-B-Y. Click off. And the font that I have selected at the minute is Antique Oakland. If you're interested, it's just a plain font. I don't know that it's definitely... Um, available on all machines certainly but it's certainly available on my macbook because it's not one that i've downloaded so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to resize this baby so i'm going to go again on edit and i want them so that they're fitting in this part here so i'm just going to offer it closer to and i'm going to drag out the file a little so i don't want them to go too narrow and drag it down so when that goes on there it is actually going to fit on quite nicely but at the moment the, the words are all as one so i just need to divide them by clicking process the overlap divide then and i'm just actually going to make a rather than and then i'll have the file with both the baby and just the plain book in that sense if you will so i'll just move that copy off to the side so that's just a book this one we're going to put the baby and again 
You want to overlap by roughly the same amount for your letters here, else otherwise they're not going to line up very straight. So I'm just overlapping by about so much. So if you have a look now, I'll zoom in. I'm overlapping the letter by so much and I'm going to select the, the, the letter and the base part and I'm going to hit middle, then weld. So that's added that. Alternatively, you could, if you wished, select all those letters again, make a duplicate, and this just gives you more options, and then you can map them on top afterwards if you wish, and then weld. So that one, and then we're going to just move that off to the side while we do the A. So again, we're wanting to overlap, but not too much. So that's roughly the same there at the bottom as what the B was. Maybe just a little smidge that way. Then again, I'm going to select the A and the base layer and middle and weld. And I've already got my copper here, so I'm okay with that. So there's my B, A. And then the next one, obviously, is our B again. So we're going to line it up, overlap by about that much, because we're doing roughly the same overlap each time. And if you're a person that likes it absolutely perfect, you can always nudge it along until it's touching the line like so and then you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 how many times you press your button and that will get it exactly the same if you're a perfectionist do that by all means so I've selected both again and hit middle and then weld and finally we're going to look at the Y now so I'm going to bring it down again so again, this is if you wanted to be the perfectionist, line it up so that the line's just touching and I'll zoom in so that I can you can see what I'm doing. Oops, right, you definitely can see now. So I've got it so that the Y is just touching and I'm going to, you could then go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and that's definitely what I did for my last one. So if I zoom back out, Just zoom to my mat, select both of those layers and again click middle because that will put it into the middle for you and then click weld. So now what we've got is our baby card like so with the baby word attached to the end. So again I'm just going to line them up to the middle and to the left so that they're perfectly aligned now, that baby. And if you want now we could go back in and put some colour. So let's see where we are actually, we're going to look at the layers first. So I'm going to just close the shapes here so we know where we're at. Just toggling off the visible. So now I've just got the baby selected. So we want this one at the top because that's the smallest. Then that one's in the right place, that one is the bottom one, so that one needs to be at the bottom. And that needs to be up one. You can see what's selected. So that's the first, top one, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. Because it selects it on the screen as you select it in your layers. So if you're unsure what layer you're on, you can actually do that. So now if we just add some colour. So again, we can add some colour to our picture. And oh, this one, we need a different one. So that will do. No, not that blue is a bit too much, isn't it? Even for me, I'll have that one. Okay, so there's our shapes with the baby. And if I select, I can always select them. And if it's, you know, I mean, this will vary dependent on the um, level of cardstock, whatever you choose to use, will obviously have an effect. So there's that and it's all lined up and you can see the letters are lined up. So I'm just going to close the colours and go back to my layers and I'm going to uncheck to bring back my layers that we had. So here's my card that's just a, a basic plain one without the words. And once you've used, you get the idea how to make the actual layers, you could make any word or any length of word just by extending these layers by whatever I did mine every 1.5 inches so if you wanted a five letter word it would be 
three, six, seven point five would be that layer, and you'd add your end on to that. Okay, so now you could, if you wish, I'm going to just bring all these letters to the top now because we want these. If we want to map them on, this is just only for the purpose of the actual machine. So if we go back onto some colour here, we can add a little bit of colour and then you could actually as well if you wished mat on the oh the colours are a bit ridiculous but never mind so there you've got some and obviously you'd line these up per perfectly I'm just doing it for the purpose of you being able to see it on the video and of course I've chosen to use that particular font but as long as it's kind of what I'd call a blocky kind of font that's going to cut nicely and chunky letters, then you could um, use whatever font you wish. So this is the card. Incidentally, if you wanted to use a different end, of course you can. So you could make it more rounded if you wanted on the end. So in that case, then you'd use perhaps circles and um, duplicate them. You could make one small, that one smaller a little bit. Maybe duplicate again, smaller still. And then you could select them all, line them up in the middle and then weld them. Got them a little bit less overlap than that one, so I just need this one. Is fine. It's this one that needs to come out a bit, so we're getting a bit more of a a bump, if you will, there. So you've got that, and that might just need to be a little bit. So you've got that kind of idea, and it might work better if you stretch it out into a somewhat oval. So you can do whatever you want. So we're looking at what the ends are going to look like. Um, Obviously, you can play around with the shapes in your scan and cut and see what kind of different ends you could make. Um, the, there's no limit, really. The world's your oyster. You can do them to your heart's content. So we'll just have a look at that. So now we've got that as a possibility for an end. We'll weld it. Actually, I didn't line everything up first. So we'll select everything and we'll get it all, everything in the middle and then weld. So then that would be another possibility of an end. And if you wanted the end to be like that, more rounded, but you wanted it to be um, square around the end for your letter here, you could leave it rounded. Or if you wanted, you could bring on a square and you could just trim it flat there by selecting that one and doing the subtract. So it's made it a bit more square at that side. And then if we shrink it in, that's giving us a slightly more rounded end, but we've got room to set, set, set it on. And obviously then all you would do is set that onto a square that's exactly the same height as that one. So the height of that one, if we make it um, 4.5 and that one, would also need to be 4.5. So now they will try to edit this part out. So now we've got a different end and you would do exactly the same thing again to create your word book. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Remember, the files are freely available over on my blog. And I'll look forward to seeing you there next time. Oh, and if you want to subscribe to my blog whilst you're over there, and remember, please tell your friends to go over there and download the files for themselves. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.